You're listening to Let's Get Surety. Let me hear your bonding talk with Kat Shamapande. Hey everyone, it's Kat Shamapande. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of Let's Get Surety. I have with me today my co-host, Mark McCallum, CEO of NESBP. Hey Mark, thanks for being on. Hey Kat, I'm really excited to be on today because today we're turning the tables Oh no. <laughs> I'm going to host and you're going to be my guest because we really want to go through a high level overview of all the professional development resources and opportunities that are afforded the surety community uh, that you and uh, your team and all those volunteers uh, put together uh, to educate the surety community. So uh, I will go ahead and you're going to have to get used to being in that. <laughs> The front chair. Uh, I know but, you're taking me yeah. off guard here, Mark. But I yeah. am always excited to talk about uh, professional development and everything that we have to offer. There's so many great resources out there, and I get to work with, I think, the best committee any SPP has. <laughs> I have to be neutral on that, but they are a very <laughs> fine committee uh, to be uh, sure. Well, y- you know, there's a lot of activity uh, and opportunities in professional development with any SPP. And I'm sure people are familiar with some of it, but not all of it. Um, For example, uh, there are a number of folks who have come up through the industry by first attending NESPP surety schools. So maybe characterize the surety schools, uh, you know, what they are, the different levels, what they do. And then we're going to go a little bit further afield from there. Sure. So we have our surety schools. We They take place twice a year uh, in the winter and in the summer. Uh, our winter school always takes place in t- somewhere in Texas and the summer school moves around the country so that we are making sure there's opportunities uh, for surety industry professionals, wherever they are, to take part in those schools. Um, we offer three different classes on the contract side, and currently we offer one class on the commercial side, but we're really excited in 2023, we're launching a second level on the commercial surety side as well. So we'll have a level one and level two commercial surety school that are part of those schools as well, which is really exciting. So um, the level one school is a great, a, a great place to come and learn the basics, Um, really get that entry level first experience in the surety industry. It allows you to network uh, and meet other professionals, both underwriters and producers in the surety space. And one of the things we always hear from the students, especially in level one, but across all of the surety schools, is that they're meeting uh, the people that they're going to work with throughout their careers. And it's interesting because as I talk to people, they come back and they will plan to come back to a surety school with people they've met and built relationships within those in that first surety school experience. And those are the people that they reach out to when they have questions. Um, So you, during the three days of level one, you get a lot of information, you absorb a lot of it, but it's really hard to take everything in because surety is a, got a lot of complexity to the industry. And if you're brand new to the surety industry, it can be a lot to really absorb but you've got a list of compatriots who all went through that level one class with you who can help guide you. You've also got your faculty um, who you get all the contact information for them as well. So when you've got questions as you get into specific scenarios and, and, and circumstances as you work through the bonding process for various clients, you've got people you can reach out to. Um, in different parts of the country for when you're dealing with clients in different parts of the country, which is terrific. Right. Well, I'm going to I'm going to ask you about the faculty in just a bit. But sure. I wanted uh, I wanted to know whether or not there is a typical student for level 1. Do they come from all different areas uh in terms of are there career switchers? Yeah. Um are there people that are, you know, administering uh or doing some of the administrative processes in bonding agencies? Are they bond producers? Uh how would you characterize the typical student? So I think the level one student can look a lot different. So you do have those career switchers who are coming in just to learn about surety. Maybe they've worked in insurance and not surety, 
or um, or something like that, and they want to get that knowledge and background so they can advance their career and kind of switch directions. We also get the administrative, like you had mentioned, staff who've maybe been involved in the surety space for a long time and really want to take the next step um, become and, and advance their career in the surety space. Um, and then we also get uh, some professionals who are, are just becoming professionals in the surety space or fresh out of college um, or have just finished up an internship in the surety space and are, are looking to to grow their careers from there and find out more about the industry. So it's kind of a diverse group of students in level one, but it's really interesting to see those groups come together and learn from each other. And if I'm not mistaken, you, you may have had people that have been in the industry for a little bit and some I, if I recall correctly, maybe a story where their first day was actually at the surety school. Yeah, yeah, we've definitely seen that. Um, that is not something we would recommend. <laughs> <laughs> we think it's good to get a little time in the industry under your belt before you come to surety school, um, coming to level one, and especially before you come to level two. Um, it's level two kind of builds off of level one. So really having that base level of knowledge that's provided in level one allows you to get the most and for your company to get the most out of your level two surety school experience. So we definitely, we don't require you to take them in order, um, but we definitely think it helps improve your experience. And that's actually the feedback we've gotten from students. Um, we have had level two students who uh, skip level one and maybe hadn't mastered uh, the skills that are outlined and taught in level one. And you can see on the website a full list of what's covered in level one okay. to make sure that's really something that you have in your background before you advance to level two. And if not, or if you're not, fe if you're feeling a little shaky in any of those, it's definitely better to go to level one first and then advance to level two. The, the level two surety school is definitely, uh, it's a step up. You're, it's a more advanced look at the, the surety, uh, construction surety space. So we would definitely recommend doing those in order if possible. And like I said, the feedback we get is when uh, someone comes to level two and, and doesn't have that background, they just don't get as much out of the class and they're not as able to bring as much back uh, to their organizations and, and contribute as much from it because the experience isn't as great for them as it is for the students who do have the background for them. So Kat, you uh, referenced uh, the website. So in, in particular, uh, which website? Well, you can find it on www.nespp.org, and it's under Attend Events, and you can find information about the surety schools there. And um, on the website, does it kind of give you general parameters on who should go to level one and who should go to level two? It does. The description for each of the levels, level one, level two, level three, as well as the commercial surety schools really outline you know, what's going to be covered and who it's a great fit for. It also provides a full outline of the content uh, in each class that's reviewed during the course of the class. So you can make sure it's the right space for you and see if you should maybe go down a level and start with level one or anything like that, just by reviewing that content outline. So uh, I wanted to circle back and ask you about the faculty. And, sure. Uh, where, where they're drawn from and what kind of experience and expertise they bring to bear. I mean, the NESPP Surety School faculty is the, I, I've worked in a number of different associations and worked with faculty for different schools. And this is the best faculty I've ever seen anywhere. They're amazing. They're extremely dedicated. They work very hard on continuously updating the content and making sure all the information that they're providing is up to date. And th they often say, you know, they're, they're there, they're as, they're as volunteers, and they're there um, training their competitors. And what's important is that, you know, we're all doing everything the right way in the surety space. That's how we advance our industry, not worrying about, you know, if one of their students is in an organization that's near them, which is a really great way to look at it. And I think it's a compatriotism you don't find in a lot of industries. So it's really nice to see it. It really does reflect the surety industry is based on relationships. That's great. And these are very experienced bond producers and oh, surety yeah. company underwriters. And experienced faculty. They, they've been in the industry a long time in their roles. Uh, a lot of them have very senior roles. They either own an agency or they they work at vice president or higher levels within surety 
companies. And they've also, many of them taught for, for quite a long time. So not only do they have the surety background and knowledge, they also have the experience in teaching that information to students. So they've got, ex some of our faculty have taught for as long as 35 years. So wow. having faculty with that background, not only in the industry itself, but also in how to share that knowledge, because sometimes just knowing something well doesn't make you a great teacher. But we not only have really knowledgeable instructors, we also have really great instructors with a lot of ex experience and know-how and how to instruct. And that's true for both contract surety and commercial surety subjects? Yeah, that's exactly right. So um, we have both agents and underwriters that take part in all of our surety school classes and are able to f provide their their knowledge and expertise in from all of their years of experience. So Kat, you talked about level one and level two, and there is also a level three uh, surety school. Can you tell us a little bit more about that level? Sure. The level three surety school is our most advanced uh, level of, of the contract surety school program. Uh, it's really intended for those with a number of years of experience, and it takes a really deep dive uh, into the surety industry and understanding nuances that are not covered in level one and level two, and that really require a background and a, and a level of experience um, that isn't required in the first two levels, but will help you get into those nuances and understand them more clearly. The level three uh, surety school course content was actually just went through an update with all the faculty working together and really working on providing a solid case study that guy that you work through for all three days of that level to really get um, in depth and advanced information going from, you know, even prior to bringing your client on all the way through looking at what happens uh, when they're looking at continuity and transition of leadership within a, within the construction clients company. So it's a really great advanced level class and still gives you the opportunity to network and meet others in the industry as well, who are also at that more advanced level. That's great. I, I wanted to maybe emphasize uh, a point that you just made, um, but the case study approach is actually that's applicable to all the levels. Is that correct? That's true. Yeah. All of our surety school classes, uh, contract surety, as well as commercial surety school classes, do focus on case studies as a way to really dive into the content in a more in-depth way and understand real life issues through cases that are taken from, from real life experiences in the surety space. Yeah, that's great. So it's not just about theory. It's about applied knowledge and you get to test out that applied knowledge uh, with your uh, colleagues and peers. Exactly. Yeah. Now, is that true for the commercial surety uh, school as well? It is. The commercial surety school also has case studies throughout that really help you understand um, how these commercial sureties applied in different industries. Uh, because commercial surety is so broad and wide reaching, it can yep. sometimes be hard to grasp all the, the different things that commercial surety can touch. So uh, it does include case studies throughout that focus on the different industries touched by commercial surety. So I, I know we're talking about in-person learning opportunities here. I know that uh, NESVP also offers from time to time um, other in-person learning opportunities, for example, workshops. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. So we also offer uh, workshops from time to time, consist regularly uh, or periodically we've offered a sales workshop, which is a really interesting look because it dives in deeply to the sales process involved in the surety industry. It's great for agents, um, but we've also had underwriters attend the sales workshop as well to understand the relationships with their agent clients um, as well as their contractor clients. So it's, it's really interesting um, to get that in-depth dive into the sales aspects. We, we've had virtual seminars on sales and we include some sales information, especially in the level three advanced course, but really to have a, a couple of days just focused solely on sales lets you dive into that in a way you can't do in just an hour or so. So, um, you know, a, a follow up question is, so who can come to these in-person learning opportunities? And what I mean by that, is it just members or non-members or both? How does that work? 
Um, all of our in-person educational events are open to NESBP members, of course, uh, members, affiliates, associates, but they're also open to non-members and anyone who's interested in learning more about the surety industry. We've definitely had some contractors who've sent members of their staff to the surety schools and or to workshops. We've had um, attorneys who've come and taken part, as well as, you know, those within um, SBA who've come to learn mm, more about okay. the surety industry. So it's, it's, they're really open to anyone who wants to learn more about surety. Right. So that when you met SBA, the U.S. Small Business Administration. Yes. Sorry. Bond yes. Guarantee program. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, okay. So we talked a little bit about in-person uh, learning opportunities. And I know uh, obviously, there's also learning opportunities at meetings through special presentations and the like. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, we've just come off, uh, you know, uh, a pandemic. Uh, although that's, <laughs> it's kind of it's still here, but it's uh, greatly diminished, hopefully. What, what types of opportunities are there virtually um, for uh, members in our community to learn? Sure. So we do offer uh, four CE courses that are focused on the surety space, uh, which are really some of the only online surety focused courses out there. Um, so it's really great. We're, we're always looking to expand that um, resource bank so that there's more um, CE applicable online courses that you can take to renew your license if you're looking to renew your license and and wanting to do that with getting surety specific information um, versus a scenario, you know, I've heard some members uh, discuss that they sometimes are stuck taking an insurance course uh, that doesn't focus on surety or anything they might do on their day to day life. Um, but that's why we're always working to offer those online CE courses. And of course, you can get CE at our in person educational offerings as well. So those are two ways you can do that. Um, so the, the CE courses, they focus on, is it contract surety fundamentals, commercial surety fundamentals? Yeah, well, is we that... actually just recently released the updated version of the commercial surety fundamentals. It's now called commercial surety and introduction. Okay. Um, and it's just recently updated and released. So you know that that information has uh, been recently reviewed. But yes, yeah, so we've got that. We've got um, the contract surety fundamentals. There's also um, an ethics course that you can take and helps fill some of those ethics credits for you as well. Um, as give you some great background with ethical scenarios based on the surety industry, which is always helpful when you're thinking of ethics in relation to your own career. Um, as well as the joint ventures course, which is allowed, goes into joint ventures. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, I, I should, uh, I would be remiss in not mentioning that, you know, as uh, an NESPP member, we have a code of ethics. And yes. so that, that ethics course, I think, really gives great voice to our mission uh, to have a community of ethical uh, surety professionals. So that's a that's really nice educational opportunity. Yeah. Um, so um, we talked about those that would provide continuing education credit. Yeah. Um, but are there other avenues uh, of timely topics that a surety practitioner could, uh, could find and be delivered conveniently to their office or on the road? Yeah, definitely. We have our virtual seminar series, which we launched well before the pandemic, but um, was d definitely an invaluable resource on a day-to-day -day basis, but even more so during the pandemic when we weren't able to, you know, get together in person. So um, our virtual seminar series features uh, about two virtual seminars per month um, throughout the year. And we have seen a rising number of subscribers each year, year over year. Uh, this year, uh, or in 2022, we had more than 380 subscribers um, wow. to our virtual seminar series who had access to all the virtual seminars. It's around 22 virtual seminars a year that we hosted live this year. They also get free, you know, included access to the recordings as well as an access to the full library of content that we have from previous virtual seminars. Um, and th th that content is reviewed uh, periodically to make sure the content provided is still up to date and accurate. Um, so you know that the information you're getting is, is relevant and helpful. Um, and it, there's more, 
more than 250 courses that you can, or virtual seminars that were previously recorded that you can go in and listen to and get information on really specific surety topics um, when, when you need it. So on demand, when you need that information. That's great. Um, so uh, you mentioned, is there like an advisory group that helps uh, sort through and, and vet topics and uh, think about what needs to be delivered to the community? Yeah, and I think that's what we can attribute the raising number of subscribers to is really the hard work of that editorial board that puts together the virtual seminar lineup for the year. They review requests that come in um, through evaluations from all of the virtual seminars that take place, as well as just topics, hot topics and topics of interest. Uh, I know when we were, the, the pandemic was just just at the beginning of the pandemic in March of 2020, um, the only thing that anyone wanted to know more about was force majeure. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, Great topic. Uh, and before that, I'm not sure that anyone had been too worried about force majeure, but at that point that became information that we needed right then. Um, so being able to have that there, you can get that information. And if you want to go back and learn more about force majeure, that content's still there so you can get to that. And that's all due to the feedback coming from that editorial board that really, you know, helps us keep our, our, finger on the pulse of what topics are of most interest and will be most helpful to the members of the surety industry. That's great. Um, what, what a timely topic. But <laughs> what, uh, just off the top of your head, what, what are some sure. of the other topics that have been treated in the past on the virtual seminars? Sure. So I can tell you that whenever we are able or, and to host a virtual seminar on a commercial surety topic, those are some of our top um, attended sessions, uh, getting specific information on the the vast array uh, uh, and and area of commercial surety is always something that you know we're seeing based off registration is extremely helpful to people. So we've covered a number of different commercial surety topics. Um, last year, we were able to offer a series uh, in which we talked with executives from different surety companies around the country. And that was really well received as well, just because you got to have a, or listen into a conversation with some of the top uh, surety executives in the country and really hear what's going on in the industry, what keeps them up at night um, and get that insider perspective from their oh, point of great. view. So some of the, those are some of the higher uh, attended sessions that we've had. And if I recall correctly, even economists you've had on from time to time and yeah, we've had a number of different economists on um, some of our keynote speakers from our in-person sessions who've talked about things like cybersecurity have also joined us for a more in-depth review on virtual seminars. We've taken an in-depth look at, at contract documents and, and really like what you're looking for inside of different types of contracts and things to be aware of, red flags, um, killer clauses in a contract. So those are all all topics that we're able to cover in those virtual seminars as well. Yeah, it sound, certainly sounds like a variety of interesting and timely topics. Um, so uh, having that advisory group and, and going and, and figuring out your slate of topics, are you open to receiving suggestions for topics? And if so, um, how would someone go about that? Sure, definitely. We're always open to getting new topic ideas for virtual seminars. Um, you can do something as simple as just filling out the evaluation after a virtual seminar and putting some topic ideas in the in there. Um, like I said, the editorial board reviews those topic areas that come in. You can also just send me an email or, or reach out to anyone on our editorial board and let them know uh, the topic that you have that's of interest to you. And like I said, we're open to new ideas and we're always excited to get more topics in there uh, that are of interest to everyone in the industry. Right. That's great. So we've, uh, you know, I think it's also worth delving into uh, some of the uh, other volunteers that are instrumental in the mm. work that's being performed. And we mentioned the faculty and we mentioned the advisory or editorial board, but is there a particular committee uh, who really is the guiding light in this uh, in this area? 
Yeah, we have our professional development committee that really uh, is the overarching committee over all the professional development offerings that any SPP has. Uh, they are terrific and really provide a lot of insight. They act as our faculty. They serve on our editorial board. So that group of people is instrumental in putting out all the professional development that we have. And the other great thing about that group is they're very collaborative and they're always bringing in committees and any any SPP volunteers as well. So, you know, we've talked about the commercial surety school and commercial surety topics on virtual seminars, and they work very closely with our commercial surety committee to make sure we're getting that com those commercial surety topics covered that are most interest to those who are active in the commercial surety uh, space. They also work with our uh, A&T or um, Automation and Technology Committee to make sure we're getting out information um, on what's happening in that space as well. So they really strive to work with those different committees, um, as well as the Ethics Committee, to make sure right. that our ethical scenarios that we have at Surety School and in other places are up to date and, and we've got new scenarios when we need them and things like that. So I think one of the best things is not only that they're they're so involved and work at, across so many different spaces, um, but also that they're so collaborative and, and bring in the volunteers um, from different specific committees w wherever we can. Certainly, certainly a credit to their professionalism. Mm -hmm. um, so really, it's it's surety practitioners creating knowledge for surety practitioners. Exactly. And so really, really important stuff. So not to put you on the spot, Kat, but <laughs> of course, that means I'm putting you on the spot. Um, but I was wondering if, if you could, uh, uh, without revealing too many uh, confidences, but where do you see the future for pr professional development efforts in, in the near term? Is there anything being planned uh, you know, right now that you feel like uh, is worth uh, maybe mentioning? Definitely. I mean, I mentioned already our level two commercial surety school that will be launched in 2023 summer school. We're really wow. excited to have that coming yep. to fruition. Um, we've been working on that project for a while um, with an effort between the professional development and commercial surety committees. So it'll be really exciting to see that launch. Um, but also we are working as a professional development committee on putting together some resources for onboarding. Um, and it's a space we didn't have oh, wow. a lot of education in previously. So we're really excited to be able to get some information out to that group of um, staff that's more administrative in a surety space. We, we haven't really been able to, to reach out to that group and provide education, but we're so excited to be able to, to fill that gap and make sure there's information um, for them as well, so that any SPP is helping to educate every part of the surety industry and every player in the surety industry. Well, th those are really exciting projects. I apologize for turning the table on you, Kat, <laughs> but I think you really provided a lot of great insight, a lot of great information about the professional development opportunities uh, that any SPP offers. So thank you. Thank you for the work that you do. And thank you for all the people that you work with. I only wish I could have been joined by some of my volunteers who really could have given voice to some of their passion for the industry. You've been listening to Let's Get Surety, Let Me Hear Your Bonding Talk, brought to you by the National Association of Surety Bond Producers. For more information about the NASBP and its members, visit nasbp.org.